Hey friends, good morning, happy Monday, hope you had a wonderful weekend. We're going to share a read aloud book with you today. It's a really, really great book called Thank You, Mr. Fokker. It's a book I used to read to my third graders all the time and we really, really loved sharing it together. So we're going to read it to you today. So I hope you enjoy this book. We hope you had a great weekend and that you're doing well. Today, together, we're going to read Thank You, Mr. Fokker, and it's by Patricia Palacco. We'll give our friends just another minute to join us, and then we'll get started. So this will be our last week of doing a read aloud every single day, and then the month of August, we'll probably do it like once a week, uh, while we you know, do some other summer stuff, and then come fall, we'll join you again. So today we're going to read Thank You, Mr. Fokker by Patricia Palacco. Let's jump in. Thank You, Mr. Fokker. And I like in the beginning it says to George Fokker, the real Mr. Fokker, you will forever be my hero. So here we go. Thank you, Mr. Fokker by Patricia Palacco. Let's jump in. The grandpa held the jar of honey so that all the family could see, then dipped a ladle into it and drizzled honey on the cover of a small book. The little girl had just turned five. Stand up, little one, he cooed. I did this for your mother, your uncles, your older brother, and now you. Then he handed the book to her. Taste. She dipped her finger in the honey and put it into her mouth. What is that taste? The grandma asked. The little girl answered, sweet. Then all of the family said in a single voice, yes. And so is knowledge. But knowledge is like of the bee that made the sweet honey. You have to chase it through the pages of a book. The little girl knew that the promise to read was last hers. Soon she was going to learn to read. Trisha, the littlest girl in the family, grew up loving books. Her school teacher mother read to her every single night. Her redheaded brother brought his books home from school and shared them. And whenever she visited the family farm, her grandfather or grandmother read to her by the stone fireplace. When she turned five and she went to kindergarten, most of all, she hoped to read. Each day she saw the kids in first grade across the hall reading. And before the year was over, some of the kids in her own class began to read, but not Trisha. Still, she loved being at school because she could draw the other kids would crowd around her and watch her do magic with crayons. In first grade, you'll learn to read, her brother said. In first grade, Trisha sat in a circle with the other kids. They were all holding our neighborhood, their first reader, sounding out the letters and the words. They said, be, be, oi, boy, and la, la. Ook, look. The teacher smiled at them when they put all the sounds together and got a word right. But when Trisha looked at a page, all she saw were wiggling shapes, and when she tried to sound out the words, the other kids laughed at her. Trisha, what are you looking at in that book, they'd say. I'm reading, she'd say back to them. But her teacher would move on to the next person. Always when it was her turn to read, the teacher had to help her with every single word. And while the other kids moved up into the second reader and the third reader, she stayed alone in our neighborhood. Trisha began to feel different and she began to feel dumb. The harder words got for the little girl, the more and more time she spent drawing. How she loved to draw, or just sitting and dreaming, or when she could go walk on walks with her grandma. 
One summer day, she and her grandma were walking together in the small woods behind their farm. It was twilight. The air was sweet and warm. Fireflies were just coming up from the grasses. As they walked, Trisha said, Grandma, do you think I'm different? Of course, her grandma answered. To be different is the miracle of life. You see all those fireflies? Every little one is different. Do you think I'm smart? Trisha didn't feel smart. Her grandma hugged her. You are the smartest, quickest, dearest little thing ever. Right then, the little girl felt safe in her grandma's arms. Reading didn't matter so much. Trisha's grandma used to say that the stars were holes in the sky. They were the light of heaven coming from the other side. And she used to say that someday she would be on the other side where the light comes from. One evening they lay on the grass together and counted the lights from heaven. You know, her grandma said, all of us will go there someday. Hang on to the grass or you'll lift right off the ground and there you'll be. They laughed and they both hung onto the grass. But it was not long after that night that her grandma must have let go of the grass because she went to where the lights were on the other side too. And not long after that, Trisha's grandpa let go of the grass too. School now seemed harder and harder. Reading was just plain torture. When Sue Ellen read her page or Tommy Bob read his page, they read so easily that Trisha would watch the top of their heads to see if something was happening to their heads that wasn't happening to hers. And numbers were the hardest thing to read. She never added anything right. Line the numbers up before you add them, the teacher would say. But when Trisha tried, the numbers looked like a stack of blocks wobbly and ready to fall. She knew she was dumb. Then one day, her mother announced that she had gotten a teaching job in California, a long way from the family farm in Michigan. Even though her grandma and grandpa were gone, the little girl didn't want to move. Maybe though, the teachers and kids in her new school wouldn't know how dumb she was. Was she really dumb? No. She just needed somebody to find a way to help her learn. She and her mother and brother moved across the country in the two-tone 1949 Plymouth, and it took five days. But at the new school, it was the same. When she tried to read, she stumbled over the words, the cat, cat, cat ran. She was reading like a baby in third grade. And when the teacher read along with them and called on Trisha for an answer, she gave the wrong answer every time. Hey, dummy. A boy called out to her on the playground. How come you're so dumb? Other kids stood near him and laughed. That was so mean. Trisha could feel the tears burning in her eyes. How she longed to go back to her grandparents' farm in Michigan. Now Trisha wanted to go to school less and less. I have a sore throat, she'd say to her mother, or I have a stomach ache, she'd say. She dreamed more and more and drew more and more and she hated school. Nobody should feel that way. Then when Trisha started fifth grade, the school was all a buzz. There was a new teacher. He was tall and elegant Everybody loved his striped coat and his slick gray pants, and he wore the neatest clothes. All the usual teacher's pets gathered around him, Stevie Joe and Alice Marie and Davy and Michael Lee. But right from the start, 
didn't seem to matter to Mr. Falker which kids were the cutest or the smartest or the best at anything. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this teacher. What do you think? Mr. Falker would stand behind Trisha whenever she was drawing and whisper, this is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Do you know how talented you are? When he said this, even the kids who teased her would turn around in their seats and look at her drawings. But they still laughed whenever she gave a wrong answer. Then one day, she had to stand up and read, which she hated. She was stumbling through a page in Charlotte's Web and the page was going all fuzzy when the kids began to laugh out loud. Mr. Falker in his plaid jacket and his butterfly tie said, stop. Are you all so perfect that you could look at another person and find fault with her? That was the last day that anyone laughed out loud or made fun of her. All except for Eric. Eric sat behind Trisha for two whole years. But he seemed to almost hate her and Trisha didn't know why. He waited by the door of the classroom for her and pulled her hair. He waited for her on the playground, leaned in her face and called her a toad. Trisha was afraid to turn any corner for fear that Eric would be there. She felt completely alone. The only time she was really happy was when she was around Mr. Falker. He let her erase the blackboards. Only the best students got to do that. And he patted her on the back whenever she got something right. And he looked hard and mean at any kid who teased her. But the nicer Mr. Falker was to Trisha, the worse Eric treated her. He got all the other kids to wait for her on the playground or the cafeteria or even in the bathroom and they jumped out and called her stupid or ugly. I wish they'd be kind. And Trisha began to believe them. She discovered that if she asked to go to the bathroom just before recess, she could hide in under the inside stairwell during free time and not have to go outside at all. In that dark place, she felt completely safe. Should any child ever feel that way? No. But one day at recess, Eric followed her to her secret hiding place. Have you become a mole, he laughed. And he pulled her out into the hall and danced around her. Dumbbell, dumbbell, maggoty old dumbbell. This Eric. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up in a ball. Suddenly she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Falker. He marched Eric down to the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy again, he said. What was he teasing you about, little one? I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure Mr. Falker believed that she could read. Or she learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading. Or she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with a sentence and then she'd say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day, Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboards. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches and they worked and talked. All at once, he said, let's play a game. I'll shout out letters and you write them on the board with the wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted. She wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery eight. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted. He shouted out many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her and together they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of her numbers or letters looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run.
But Mr. Fokker caught her arm and sank to his knees in front of her. You poor baby, he said. You think you're dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be so lonely and afraid. She sobbed. But little one, don't you understand? You don't see letters or numbers the way other people do. And you've gotten through school all this time and you fooled so many, many good teachers. He smiled at her. That's a cunning and smartness and such bravery. Then he stood up and finished washing the board. We're going to change all that, little girl. You're going to read, I promise you that. Now almost every day after school, she met with Mr. Fokker and Miss Beasy, a reading teacher. They did a lot of things that she didn't even understand. At first she made circles in the sand and then big sponge circles on the blackboard going from left to right, left to right. Another day they flicked letters on a screen and Trisha shouted them out loud. Still other days she worked with wooden blocks and built words Letters, 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 words, words, words. Always sounding them out, and that felt good. But though she read words, she hadn't read a whole sentence. And deep down, she still felt dumb. And then one spring day, and it had been three or four months since they had started, Mr. Falker put a book in front of her. She'd never seen it before. He picked a paragraph in the middle of the page, and he pointed to it. Almost as if it were magic, or as if light poured into her brain, the words and sentences started to take shape on the page as they never had before. She marched them off to, slowly she read a sentence, then another and another, and finally she read a paragraph, and she understood the whole thing. She didn't notice, but Mr. Fokker and Miss Pleasy had tears in their eyes. They were so happy, right, that she was reading. That night, Trisha ran home without stopping to catch her breath. She bounded up the front steps, threw open her front door, and ran through the dining room to the kitchen. She climbed up on the cupboard and grabbed a jar of honey. Then she went to the living room and found the book on a shelf, the very book that her grandpa had shown her so many years ago. She spooned honey on the cover, tasted the sweetness and said to herself, the honey is sweet and so is knowledge. But knowledge is like the bee who made the honey. It has to be chased through the pages of the book. Then she held the book, honey and all, close to her chest. She could feel tears rolling down her cheeks, but they weren't tears of sadness. She was happy, so very happy. She was looking up at the stars, right? The rest of the year became an odyssey of discovery and adventure for this little girl. She learned to love school. And I know this because that little girl was me, Patricia Polacco. I saw Mr. Fokker again some 30 years later at a wedding. I walked up to him and introduced myself. At first he had difficulty placing me. Then I told him who I was and how he had changed my life so many years ago. He hugged me and asked me what I did for a living. Why, Mr. Fokker, I answered. I make books for children. Thank you, Mr. Fokker. Story is called Thank You, Mr. Fokker by Patricia Polacco. Such an amazing story. Patricia Polacco is a beautiful author, and it's so cool to hear her life story in her own words as she writes a book and the remarkable teacher that helped her find her way. So never give up. Keep reading, keep trying. Anything you're struggling with, find a new way to learn it or ask for help. And just keep on trying and you'll get there. And you can become anything you want to be, just like she became a beautiful author. Thanks so much for joining us today at the Read Aloud. We hope you enjoyed this amazing story as much as we did. We do, we did. <laughs>
Have a great day. Be kind to each other. And remember, keep washing those hands. Bye, friends.